Alright, so welcome to my sort of analysis on the build trick, or rather my sort of performance on the build trick, and my sort of interpretation on the build trick. And uh, yeah, so this is going to be an, an, oh, I can't English, an analysis on my performance and some of the decisions that I made regarding the build trick itself. Uh, I much prefer making analysis videos over tutorials, uh, mainly because I think that, especially for younger magicians, people tend to become really rigid in how they do something. So for example, when they see like a video, like, oh yeah, this is like the, an easy card trick to do or whatever, right? But ultimately, it becomes the one and only way for them to accomplish an effect. And that's uh, not something that I think is ideal, especially because effects versus like slights, effects are a lot more, they're sort of, they have like their own sort of structure and they're, they, it needs to sort of conform to someone's personality versus slights. Slights are very mechanical. You can just, you know, there's a set way to do them versus effects. You know, again, you want to sort of uh, go with your flow rather than you going with the flow of the effect. If that's if that makes sort of makes sense, but uh, I am uh, filming this before I release the video for the Biddle trick performance, so that's uh, that's something we'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, what I realized that uh, as I was like doing it is that. Oh, this is a uh, sort of similar to Cody Nottingham's uh, build trick, which he published back in Biddleless, which is a video download that he did with uh, Think Nguyen. Uh, so it is similar in handling, but the methods are completely different. But uh, yeah. So before we get started with the analysis, I do want to go over a bit of history uh, on the build trick and, you know, it's, uh, it's overall existence, I guess. So the modern version of the build trick is actually a combination of two different sort of effects, but uh, the build move itself d does like predate those effects. So the build move itself uh, came from Transcendent by Elmer Biddle. Uh, which was first published in the Genie Magazine Volume 11, uh, number 8, uh, no, which was published back in 1947. And Transcendent basically consisted of two effects. I'm not gonna like describe them because it's two effects, but uh, yeah, it both of them used the build move, and uh, they aren't really related to the build trick though. So. If you really want to know what the plot for the effect was, uh, for the effects rather, then you could go ahead and, uh, and visit uh, Magicpedia. It's over there to describe it, and it's where I get the bulk of this information from, because, uh, you know, it's uh, the build trick, so yeah. And what's really interesting is that this move, this biddle trick move, was uh, this biddle move was so iconic that now, anything that uses this grip is now called a biddle grip, right? It's this end grip is now called the bill grip, which is sort of interesting that we changed the names to something that's uh, like revolving around that grip, which is interesting, I guess. So we basically changed the grip's name to the move, even though the move used the grip, which is uh, weird, but you know, that's, uh, that's just something. Now, uh, the first effect that actually inspired the build trick, the modern interpretation of the build trick, is actually called Wow by Richard uh, Bruce uh, Ferguson, I think. And he published Wow back in uh, 1951 in Hugard's Magic Monthly, uh, Volume 9, Number 4. And the effect was basically five cards were, uh, five cards were like revealed, right? So you turn the top five cards over. Right, the the spectators selected one, and then you did a full, uh, you did a build move with the full deck, and then the selection teleports from the spectators' hands to the deck, and that's basically wow, right? It's very reminiscent of the modern day build trick, but it is uh, sort of different. The other effect that inspired it was called Bill Through. Bill Through was actually made by Elmer Biddle himself, so that's the guy who made uh, the build trick. And Bill Through was uh, published in The Gen, Volume 16 and Number 3, uh, back in 1960. And that's sort of the second effect that inspired the build trick. Uh, well, modern day interpretation of the build trick. And the effect is basically five cards, uh, selection is part of the five, the bill move with uh, basically half of the deck, right? And then the packet is placed on top of the deck, 
and then like the specter does like whatever magical gesture and they're like oh look your card went from the uh, packet on top of the deck to the center so it's uh, sort of like that right so basically the modern day interpretation of build trick is a combination of wow and then uh, wow they basically just took the uh, the plot and then the method they actually took the uh, the method from build through so build through you actually need to cut the deck and then you did the middle move so that's uh that's where it comes from so for my performance uh, or for my interpretation of the build trick i did have three main problems that i want to sort of uh, address or sort of tackle i guess so uh, my first problem with the build trick was that there wasn't really like a a pattern for the build trick so if you've ever seen like performances for like the build trick or whatever you'll notice that a lot of the times people are sort of describing what they're doing they're like oh yeah let me just take out four cards in the deck let me just like cut the deck and you know to think i think about which card it is right and they just peel through it. and it's just like oh man that's uh that's uh that's pattern all right just not, <laughs> there's just it exists right it's uh Nothing that remarkable of Patter, and that's why I don't really like the build trick. I mean, it's fine, but it's uh, it can be better, I guess. Um, the other the other um, the other problem that I had with the build trick was uh, I said before, but like you take you took out like four cards, and you know why would you need to take out four cards? There's really not sort of any reason why you should take out four cards. Uh, like uh, like people like to use the the explanation of oh yeah I, I want like more chances because you know yeah 25% chance of getting your card right it's just like you never did that for any other effect right you never did that for like Chicago opener you never did that for any like ambitious card routine so why would you need to take out four cards now it just doesn't make sense and the I mean the reason that we know of is we need four cards or five cards because we need to do the build trick, right? The, the build move, rather. And that's uh, sort of it, right? <laughs> like, so, like, for, for us, like, the internal reality is we need four cards because we need to, do, to, bleh, to do the build move. But then it's, you know, the external reality is, why is this guy taking four cards? That doesn't make any sense, right? <laughs> it's like... So the, ex the internal reality is how we perceive, perceive the effect, the external reality is how like spectator perceives the effect, and so ultimately, you know, it's really out of place, because you're taking four cards out for no reason, and that's, uh, that's really bizarre, so I tried to circumvent that through patter, and you'll see that a bit later on, so that's, that's a thing. And then the third problem that I had is, why would you cut the deck? <laughs> it's uh right it's like why would you why would you there's no need for you to cut the deck as you count cards right that's just a very bizarre thing that i've sort of seen going on it's uh why <laughs> right it's uh again right we need to cut the deck to accomplish the effect but there's really no reason for us to cut the deck besides that it helps us accomplish the effect but if it doesn't clarify the effect then you know there's not really sort of any reason to do that so you sort of get get what i mean so yeah so i'm actually going to tell you the mechan the, the mechanics of the effect but it's not going to be in too much detail uh, but i'm going to like list off what i'm doing and why i'm doing them and uh you know it, i'm just gonna tell you them because you know it's pretty hard <laughs> to do them anyways uh, but I want to note that I'm not really doing them because like they're hard because I want to flex or anything But because I think it's how best to streamline the effect, right? At the end of the day, you're basically doing effects for for the spectators. You're not doing effects for for magicians I mean you can but like you want the effect to be as clear and as uh, sort of direct to the spectator as possible, right? I mean, I like doing hard stuff I mean, sometimes, uh, but it's just for like personal satisfaction. When I do things for spectators, it's going to be a lot easier as long as, you know, I can like clarify it and whatnot, right? So if I use hard methods, it's because I think it's helpful, not because it's hard, if that sort of makes sense. But yeah, let's, uh, 
let's get into the analysis itself. So have you ever heard of a time heist before? I sure don't even know why I'm asking you that. We've had this conversation before. Uh, maybe not in this timeline. So over here, I said time heist. Uh, time heist is basically establishing the Chekhov's gun and basically sets, uh, sets, the, uh, sets the theme of the effect, which is time travel, right? And uh, yeah, you'll, you'll, I'll get into it a bit later on, but hell, that's it for now. Uh, it, it'll all make sense in a bit, but uh, I just want you to have a card selected. Uh, and So over here, you can see that, again, the selection process is the exact same as all of my other effects, because, you know, it's consistency in action. Again, with Erdnaze, everything should be like sort of consistent to sort of drown out the... Uh, drown out the uh, sort of inconsistencies, I guess, if that sort of makes sense, so everything should be consistent so then uh you know it doesn't appear to be odd if that makes sense but yeah that's uh that's the ordinary thing well, it's up whenever you want so over here and please don't forget about it because you forgot about it like in some timelines and i got really angry so you know you don't want to forget about that uh but yeah so over here i mentioned like that they forgot about their card a couple of times in other timelines or whatever which plays into something later on and again it, it sort of like presents the theme of the effect again it's like yeah time travel again yay right so yeah take one last look and we'll just lose it in the deck but uh yeah i'm actually i don't know i'm kind of disorientated with uh timelines and whatnot so uh so over here, I did a control to the top, and then I did a riffle stack. So if you uh, if you know anything about riffle stacking, uh, you'll know that it's uh, pretty difficult. But the reason why I decided to do a riffle stack is because then I could riffle stack a certain amount of cards on top of the selection. So again, I did a control to the top, and then I did a riffle stack. So then now I know the exact position of where the selection is. So when I can take up the four cards or five cards, depending on like how you're doing the effect or whatever. So I'm taking out the four cards. I know exactly where the selection is and I could take it out at that position face down. So rather than turning the deck face up, taking the cards out where I can see the cards, now I can do them face down, which I think is uh, a lot better. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, we've done this trick at least like what 50, 52 times, I, I guess. So, uh, I, I mean, I need to find your card, but uh, I don't know. It's very bizarre. So I used the uh, the excuse of, oh yeah, man, we did the effect so many times that I don't, I don't know what your selection is anymore. It's like, uh, yeah, sure. I guess I'll take out like a couple of cards to see like, you know, which timeline your card is this time, right? So that's the uh, that's sort of the. Um, that's sort of like the approach I did for that. And uh, over here, you'll notice that I'm doing it face down, like I said before, because I can, because it's the uh, it's the riffle stacking. So I know the selection where it is. And yeah, it's a uh, timeline are all mixed up. And what? So you'll notice like how casual I'm doing it. I'm not like bring I'm not necessarily bringing out too much attention to it. I'm like rambling. I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah timelines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And you'll notice that sometimes I place cards up, uh, back up, back down. And so, again, it's like a very casual thing. They shouldn't like be like it shouldn't have too much attention brought onto it because why would it, right? You're just taking four cards out of the deck. It's just that. And also, uh, I like using I like using four cards more because why would five cards, like why would there be five cards, right? So I never understood like five cards or five packets. For me, I always like four for playing cards because four is like, you know, there's four aces, right? Because there's four suits. So I always like using four more than five. It's just like a personal, personal uh, sort of decision to make. If you don't want to use it, then you know that's fine. You can use five cards, but personally, I like using four. And uh, I do like doing this process, this entire um, upjogging process face down, because um, if you're gonna feel for the card, right? A lot of people like when they do the build trick, they do it face up, and they feel for the card. But the problem with that is you're not feeling the card anymore. 
you're looking at the cards, right? If you're like feeling for cards and then you're just like looking at them, like that's not really feeling for the cards. Like you're, you're just searching for the cards, which is completely different from, you know, randomly taking cards out, right? So I think that doing the uh, up jogging process face down is a lot better, especially if you're trying to do the excuse of why oh, yeah, I'm feeling for the card. So that's, uh, that's why I like doing the selection process face down. The other thing about it is that when I do the, uh, when I do the up jogging process, now I don't need to turn the deck face, uh, face, uh, face up, face down, face up, right? So now the deck just remains in its proper face down position the entire process, rather than me having to turn the deck face up and then turn it back face down and then turn it back face up. So I think that doing everything face down streamlines everything. So that's why I'm doing it face down. So yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, no, 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 maybe not. Uh, so yeah, you're gonna need to give me a couple of chances over here because uh, I mean, time travel and whatnot, it's kind of all bizarre. But uh, is your card over here? So over here, you'll notice that when I take the cards out of the deck, I actually never, I actually never, uh, actually never like place them on top of the deck, right? So over here, give me a couple of chances over here because uh, uh, I mean, time travel and whatnot, it's kind of all bizarre. But uh, is your card over here? Right, so one of, the, one of the other problems with the build trick that I had is that when people take out the four cards or five cards of the deck, they just put them out of the deck and then they place them back on the th on top of the deck, right? And if you're really going to vanish a card for real, you would, you know, let them stay there and then just, right? It disappears from there and then vanishes despite the distance, right? So this is a sort of compromise. This is a compromise for for the method, rather. So here, I'll, I'm never placing the, the packet directly on top of the deck, even though I sort of need them to be in close proximity. proximity. So there's still some sort of distance between the two. There's still a distinct separation between the packet and the deck. It is? Okay, perfect. Okay, so we have- Because throughout like, the entire deck, they're never, uh, throughout the entire effect, they're never fully on top of the deck, right? They're still separated. But again, I do need them to be closer together, but ultimately they're still their own sort of element in the effect. So that's, um, that's sort of why I, uh, I just never square everything up on top of the deck is that, you know, that's a, that's a thing. So, you know, you, you also want to you know, take that into account where you're like placing stuff on top of the deck, placing stuff away from the deck, right? So that's why everything is away from the te deck technically, right? So that's a compromise. A 10, a 3, a 2, and a 4. Also notice how I don't necessarily call out the, the like the full identity of the cards, right? It's just like, oh yeah, a 10, a 4, a 3, and a 5, or whatever, right? So that's, a, <laughs> that's also a choice that I made where it's like, you know, people aren't going to care about the other cards, right? The moment they see their selection, everything is just more noise, right? Everything is just extra. So I don't call up to the to the identity of the cards because it's not relevant. So why would I ever, ever like care about them? All they need to know is that there's three other random cards and then their selection, right? That's all they need to know. And so all they need to know is that there's four cards, they're going to receive four cards and their selection is part of them. So that's all they need to know. If I say the identity of the cards, that's just going to be more things for me to say and it doesn't really help the effect that much. So ultimately, I'm just going to just call up the, uh, the value of the cards rather than saying the full name of the cards. So that's why I started, um, that's why I'm just like brushing past them really quickly. So yeah. So your card is one of those, correct? Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. So I just want you to uh, hold up your hand real quick. So over here, I think I flashed a bit. <laughs> so uh, instead of using a sort of biddle move, I, I decided to use something, well, originally I was decided I wanted to use something by Bruce Elliott. 
So I originally wanted to use something called the Elliot Control, which was first published back in Best of Magic by Bruce Elliot back in 1956. But then it sort of had its own flaw, so then I switched it to this method, which is I'm palming the bottom card, which is the selection, and then I have a pinky break in the deck, and I insert the palm card into the deck, right? So it's uh the reason why I decided to do that is to eliminate the weird cutting action and then the bill move, which I think, you know, it's uh it's out of place to just randomly have a um a cutting process and over here i'm actually masking i'm masking the so i just want you to uh, hold up your hand roll. i'm masking the insertion of the palm card into the deck as i'm giving you the packet right so by doing that i'm basically hiding the bigger action uh, i'm basically hiding the smaller action under a bigger action right so the insertion is part of the giving the packet if that makes sense right so that's uh that's sort of what I did, and ultimately I, I couldn't get rid of the bill grip. It's uh I, I really wanted to get rid of the bill grip, but I can't. So I need the cover for for inserting the card into the deck. So I can't. So that's uh that's what I'm stuck with. So there there's some things that you just can't necessarily like fully streamline because sleight of hand it's flawed it's you know mechanical but at the end of the day you know there's some things that we have to like compromise right we have to sacrifice some things to you know elevate some other things so that's sort of like uh that's sort of what i like about sleight of hand so yeah quickly and uh we'll just place so over here uh, yeah, that's the only deck turn or deck turnover that I do throughout the entire effect, right? I just did like uh, So usually when you're doing something in uh, In the build trick you would have the deck face down you would select a card face down and then they would lose it face down But then you would need to turn it face up to do the uh, up jogging process turn it to the turn the deck back face down to do the to show like the four cards, right? And then you would do the uh, build trick uh, or the build move, and then turn the deck back face down, uh, face up to do the revelation, right? So there's four different deck turn turnovers throughout the entire effect, which is really exhausting because why? So over here, I just decide to do one and it's very casual. So the only deck turnover that I do is just a risk kill onto the table. It's not even like in the, uh, like a deck flip or anything. It's just oh, placing the deck down onto the table. So that's another reason why I decide to have the deck face uh, face down throughout the entire process. Is that when I do the uh, turnover onto the table, it's just going to be very casual, and you know it's just one move and it's just done, right? And so I also decide to do the. Uh, I also decide to do, uh, what is it, the, uh, the, I also decide to do the revelation uh, with the deck face up because I do like the uh, revelation, the, uh, the selection to be face down in a sea of face up cards. So I think that you needing to take out the card and then flip it around is a lot better it's a lot more like there, there's a, there's like a tiny bit of build up, right? If you just spread the deck face down and you see their selection face up, it's like, oh, cool, right? <laughs> it's uh, in my opinion, that's very anticlimactic because you're just shoop, and then they see their selection and then they're done, right? Versus if uh, if you do something face uh, face up and then you spread through it and they see that one face down card. And then, you know, there's a, there's sort of a tension, right? They're building up tension to be like, is that my selection? So that's why I do sort of like uh, doing like revelations with a face up deck and then having a face down card in the center. So that's uh, that's a choice that I made. Uh, place your card over there. Place uh, the packet over there. All right. So uh, yeah, here I made the mistake of uh, rambling for too long. I don't know why I decided to do that, uh, but that's uh, that's the problem with me uh, doing things for the first time and just trying to improvise. So uh, yeah, I usually uh, usually when I do performances, I improvise a lot. So 
just because like why it's not like actual things that I do so you know I might as well just have fun with it just improvise things and see yeah uh, what I come what come up with on the spot and uh, third turns out I could ramble for a lot longer than I thought I could <laughs> so this is uh, this is a big mistake uh, I rambled for far too long and then made the effect very boring so I mean in the end it did help uh, I guess it did help with the theme of time heist but it's like it's not necessary right <laughs> it's uh it's really not so I'll just uh, skip ahead uh, where is it oh my god it's so long <laughs> uh, I screwed myself over over here um, man this is uh this is a uh, quite a bit of patter over here Whew, that's a uh, more than half the video I think is just dedicated to that oh my god I don't care okay me okay there there we go okay so in between of your hand there's actually now one two and three cards which back okay so now yeah as you can see there's way too much patter way too long between like the effect and then the actual revelation right it's uh way too long but so if i wanted to actually streamline this a bit more i would just cut down the part in the middle right so i, I would reduce that by a lot but i would still want a bit of a time gap between like the effect and giving them the uh giving them the uh the packet and then the vanish so i want a bit of time between like every, the process the setup and then the revelation so i want a bit of time because uh, well when you give them the packet their attention is fully on those cards right so i want them to again i want that to sort of marinate in and i want them to sort of forget about the deck because i don't want the deck to be like part of the effect from now on it sort of fades into the background and i think that's what makes the that's what makes the uh, revelation a bit stronger is because you know it's uh they forgot about it now all their attention is here and then the deck doesn't even come close to the packet right so then when it, it comes time to reveal they have three cards i think that's a lot stronger than you know doing it straight away so I do like having a bit of time, but this is way too long. So that's something that I, I'm going to change. Not really. I don't really do the build trick. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, so the question, what happened to your card? Well, that's where the time heist comes into play. Also, I forgot to say it, but the vanish, I don't really point out that their selection is gone because they know their selection. And so the fact that when I take out like one one card like one by one right i say there's oh yeah there's one two and then three cards i don't really say like oh yeah there's selection in this thing because they know the moment this is, there's three cards that their selection is gone right because one they don't see their selection and two it's only natural to assume that it would be the important card that they uh that they selected is gone right because why would why would any other card vanish for no reason right if imagine if i vanished to three of clubs and their selection would still be there that would be kind of stupid so the moment i count out three cards i think that they know their selection is gone and so that's why i never really bring attention to the fact that oh your selection's gone right none of that so yeah because he actually stole your card and actually replaced it into the same Okay, and that's the uh, and that's the revelation, a face down, a face down card within the uh, face up deck. So yeah, but I think I made a mistake too in that uh, <laughs> in that uh, I said uh, where is it? I replaced it into the. Yeah, I said <laughs> I replaced it into the deck. It's like who says that, right? That's dumb. Why would that, why would I ever replace the card into the deck? So I'll I'll find another another uh, presentation for that but in the meantime i think that's what that's what i'm sticking with even though i'm never going to do the build trick ever again maybe maybe in the future maybe uh maybe next year you'll see like another performance to see like the difference in 
how I evolved and how I think about effects. But for now, uh, that's uh, that's not that bad of an effect. Center of the deck, and that is the ten of hearts, and that is how I performed a perfect time heist because uh, I don't have anything else to do besides card tricks. So yeah. Yeah, so I just said, oh yeah, I don't have anything else to do except card tricks. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, like I have the ability to time travel and I just do card tricks with them. It's, uh, I don't know, it's just a little bit of uh, funny, funny before I do anything else, right? It's just like, I don't know, it's just like, it's just to make fun of how ridiculous the situation is. It's like, yep, the ability to time travel and I'm doing card tricks. Because yeah, I'm not stealing money from a bank or anything. I'm just doing card tricks, and so it's just you know ridicule, ridiculing myself and sort of the situation. So that's uh, you don't need to do that. It's just a personal choice. Again, a lot of these are personal choices, but that's why I think like these analysis videos are so much more important because again they're personal, and ultimately what you do is up to you. And so I don't want you guys to be conforming to other people's um, sort of vision of an effect, right? I want you guys to sort of make your own choices, make uh, sort of see what's going on with uh, with yourself. So uh, yeah, but besides that, yeah, that was uh, my approach to the build trick. It's still a work in progress. I think it's always going to be a work in progress, uh, but I'm going to work on it very slowly because it's not my type of effect. I mean, ultimately, anything that you see on social media from me, it's uh, it's not things that I perform in real life. I mean, I really like having a distinction between what I do in real life and what I do on social media, because not everything on social media works for real life, and vice versa as well. So that's uh, that's sort of like uh, that's sort of the approach that I like to take with uh, magic, right? Uh, especially when there's two distinct. Uh, two distinct uh, barriers, I wanted to say, two distinct worlds of magic, if that makes sense. But um, yeah, uh, before I go, I do want to I do want to say like you should check out Cody Nottingham's project with Think Nguyen called Biddleless. They both have uh, two distinct approaches to the build trick, uh, both of which uh, are very beautiful. And uh, yeah, they're they're sort of different from mine, but they also have uh, their own uh, sort of uh, sort of uh, sort of uh, ideas sort of uh, presentation on it so yeah go ahead and check it out but besides that uh this has been a decently long video but yeah hope to see you guys next time stay safe stay healthy and uh see you guys on the next one so yeah